And welcome again, dear friends, to another edition of Fresh Bread. This is Reverend Phil Anderson, pastor of Oakland United Methodist Church in Kansas Avenue United Methodist Church here in Topeka, Kansas. Well, it is now Tuesday, May the 11th, 2021. Hope your week is going well. Here we are starting out early in another week here, and so many things are on the horizon. You know, again, it's a little hard to project where things are going to be by the time you hear this, because I'm recording it actually today on Saturday, April 24th, 2021. So that's about three weeks out. But I am prayerfully optimistic that things are going to be going well. We're going to be seeing even more of our uh, churches returning to more of a normal way of doing things. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk to you about today as we think about the ways we're doing things and uh, maybe what we can look forward to in this next few months. So let's take a look at kind of where we've been. You know, it's amazing to think how things came to a grinding halt back in March of 2020. We don't have to rehash that. We already know about it. But again, you know, we tried to get it started again in July, which we did successfully, although we met in the basement at Kansas Avenue. We were in the sanctuary at Oakland. And again, uh, we kept going all the way through the end of October into November. And then we had to shut her down again for about four months. And then we restarted in March. And again, my prayer is that we never have to completely shut down again. There'll be ways, even if we have to cut back a little bit of doing things so that we don't have to completely close everything up again. Prayerfully, that's what I'm hoping. You know, the other thing is in the middle of all of the challenges that came with shutting things down, we found that we have another vehicle, and that is social media. We were able to launch a Facebook page and... Now we are in the middle of, again, this idea of developing some plans, some visions for the future. We, again, hopefully had everybody's uh, uh, survey filled out that wanted to take part in ministry over the weekend. And again, if you were interested in being a part of that and you didn't get the survey filled out, you can always just give me a call at 785-224-6432. You can text me at that number and we'll make sure we get you a survey so you can fill it out. We realize there's no perfect time to have a meeting like that, but we tried to schedule it before high school and college graduations. And so that's why we did it on May the 8th. The other thing is we wanted to be able to look at these surveys and kind of go over them myself and maybe some of the lay leaders in the church as we pursue these goals and dreams and visions really i believe that god's given us so we can then launch into our 40 days of prayer later here in the month of may taking us all the way through june and then we have the ability to come back together hopefully in early july and really start putting some wheels on these programs you know it's funny how there's different seasons of the year that we consider starting points now for a lot of people of course january 1st is the start of the new year for obvious reasons but there's also something to be said that the first of september in many ways is kind of that other starting point isn't it and that's where we have the traditional end of summer and the beginning of the fall even though school now starts in middle of august for a lot of the students you know we used to be when i was in school it would be right around labor day well now it's starting in the middle of august or even sometimes before the middle of august but we still see the first part of september is that break point where we start a new uh, season so to speak and so the goal would be really to kind of make sure we're having things rolling by the time September rolls around. So, again, we're going to pray about it in, in June, all these things we believe God has. And then we're going to come back in July, God willing, and go over some of these things. Hopefully we'll get two or three priorities. And, you know, one of the things that's um, on my mind, and I believe it's, it's something that uh, hopefully you would agree with, and that is when we start some of these new ideas, Let's don't try to start out with more than we can handle. Let's take it slow, but let's do something at first that we can be successful with. So maybe it's an outreach in the neighborhood, or maybe it's something we're trying to do to bring in families and children. And maybe it's just some real basic things that go hand in hand with that. Maybe such as let's have a cleanup day at the church. Let's see who shows up and brings uh, some things to clean up the buildings and to get things tidied up so that when people do come, we'll be ready for them. You know, that the old saying is what came first, the chicken or the egg. But I, I will guarantee you, the first thing is to get the buildings ready to get some things ready to be in place. Because if people come and it's not there often, they will not come back. 
And so we have to be ready to welcome them, to greet them. So we're going to go through a lot of training on just how to respond to new members, how to make the churches a welcoming place, and how to then have things in place for families and young people, getting the rooms cleaned up, and just sort of some things that we need to do. Um, I believe short of that, we're not going to see much in the way of growth, especially with young people. There's just too many other places, really, that they can go. So we'll be talking about some ways of maybe launching into this idea. I'm going to try to send some people out into some strategic locations, maybe to visit some other churches in Topeka, some Methodist churches and some other types of churches, just to see what's out there. Because, you know, if all we know is what we've seen every week, it's going to be difficult to see what our... Uh, needs will be. So we, we have to somehow gauge our needs and to see what is working elsewhere and then to tailor those needs to our own congregation. We don't have to copy them, but we can certainly learn from them. And, you know, the thing is, friends, that there's so many unchurched people that I don't believe we're going to be taking people away from their other churches and they're certainly probably not going to be taken away from ours when they're out evangelizing and witnessing to their neighbors. So it's all about just trying to get things ready. And that's really what this process is about as we will launch these 40 days of prayer here at the end of May. One of the things I'm hoping that's going to happen out of this, we, we talked yesterday a little bit about one of the side benefits of not meeting in person was getting our social media going, especially with our Facebook Live. Our website is really running well with Tom Lynn's help. We need some backups, of course, for Tom. We, we also have other social media. We've got uh, Twitter, and we've, of course, as we said, we have our Facebook and our website. Uh, we'll hopefully move into Instagram here before long. So we want to do everything we can that's going to reach people. But we, we've really got a, a, a big challenge ahead of us at both churches, not just in terms of our facilities and the programs that we're offering and that we need to expand into these other areas, especially as it relates to young people and families. But we also have to pick, pick up our game with our social media. And then we, we certainly need to have more of a um, homepage for our website that's going to give us uh, a chance to really let people know who we are, to welcome them, to maybe have some photos of what we do. And it's going to take a, a, a process of everybody kind of pulling together. It may take some funds to get it off the ground. Certainly, it's going to take a little time. So we need to, again, set some ideas ahead of us. And that's the whole idea here as we kind of go forward. One of the reasons I'm mentioning that, though, is that we've already kind of got people somewhat at least aware of our Facebook page and our uh, Twitter page. Uh, most people, and, and our website too, for that matter. But a lot of people are more familiar with the Facebook page because they're typically on Facebook. I'm st but I'm still amazed at the number of people who don't have computers in the churches. And, and you know, some churches, probably 99% of the people are online constantly. They've got smartphones. They've got computers at home. They are really well connected. And that, yet we have, we have found that there's a number of people in our congregations who don't have a whole lot of technical um, either experience or they don't have the uh, different uh, outlets in their own homes, such as computers or tablets or smartphones, so that they can really uh, take advantage of some of these things. So it's putting us at a, at a bit of a, a challenging point, but we still have to move forward in this area, in this field. So that's kind of where we're at with this whole idea of taking all of the different ideas we've got and then developing these priorities as we move into these plans for our church. And it's a work in progress. We're going to have to be able to shift and move as the Holy Spirit leads us. We may start off in one direction and go over into another. And again, that's why it's so vitally important that we bathe all this in prayer. So we're not going to just jump into it. And yet we're going to go ahead and start moving this process forward. And prayer is the first step. We're going to continue to pray all the way through. But right now we're praying that God will give us a direction on what our priorities need to be. Then once we get these priorities established, we're going to pray that God's going to continue to direct us and to lead us into these areas that he wants us to go to. So I'll have a little bit more to say about some of these thoughts and plans here as you stay with us this week. I've got nothing written down. These are just things off the top of my head. But I'll have more to share with you tomorrow as you come back for more fresh bread. So until tomorrow, this is Reverend Phil Anderson, pastor of Oakland United Methodist Church and Kansas Avenue United Methodist Church right here in the capital city of Topeka, Kansas. 
thanking you for being with us and hope to see you tomorrow. Until then, may God richly bless you as my prayer. Have a great day.